I did not come from this sort of lifestyle. And I've just had to really work my way up, just be super resourceful with everything God's given me and, you know, take the right opportunities when I have it. And here I am. Welcome to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today, I have a special treat for you because I'm actually bringing on one of my clients who specializes in website building, digital marketing strategies. Plus, she's like a total crunchy mom like me, so I love her. She's a wife, mom of two, and she loves her two Frenchies. So we've got to talk about that because she needs to become a Cavapoo lover. But she's a multi-passionate business owner and host of More Than Mom podcast. She loves serving women and helping build their businesses to be able for them to work from home. So I really, really, really want you to pay attention to everything that Sam Cook teaches us today because she keeps it real and for real what it's like behind the scenes to build a business with little ones at home. And she works with her husband too. So we're going to get into it. Welcome, Sam, to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Okay. And you flew in. Where are you from? Again. Uh, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. That's right. So I left this morning about 3.30, left my house about 3.30 this morning. <laughs> Aww, I love that. Okay, so how did you become, you know, you have digital abundance now. Mm -hmm. How did you get into that whole world? My whole life is just like taking one big, like, huge step and it's paying off because it's just the right thing I need to do. And God calls me to that. So I found a course that teach like or that taught web design in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So I went 10 days, learned how to build websites, learned how to code, all that in 10 days. Wow. And um were you just like on Google being like, how do I build websites a, in Mexico? A friend of mine did their course from college. I mean I hadn't really talked to her and she was just like posting pictures. I was like, ooh, that's so cool. And then she's like, oh hey, they're doing it in Mexico. And I was like Oh, that's awesome. And I booked my flight and went five days later. Wow. So, okay. So talk about taking a step of faith because you had to invest yeah. a lot to yeah. go there and you don't really know what the outcome is going to be. No, um, I actually lost my job because I went and did that. So I came home, got fired like on the spot the next morning and they were like, well, we just realized we could do it without you. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, then God just gave me this amazing skill. And I started building websites. I just started reaching out to like community, like small businesses that I knew from the job I was previously at. Cause I mean, I went to all the networking, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and partnered with a friend that was also doing them, but he was just doing them for private investigators. So he's like, I need somebody to be like social cause I'm antisocial. So I would go network, we would work together and so I built websites for probably about two years until Chandler graduated from chiropractic school. So wow. then I had babies, took that time off, and it was through one of the VIP calls that somebody was like, I need help. And I'm like, oh, I can actually help you with that. And they were like, you really need to get back into this. Mm -hmm. And so it was just God was like, hey, I gave you that skill for a reason. You took a season off and now it's time to get back into it. Mm -hmm. So mm. it reminds me of that story in the Bible. I think it's in Mark where Jesus feeds the 5,000. Mm -hmm. He has the, you know, he has the fish and the loaves and there's like 20,000 people there and they don't have enough to eat. Yeah. But he's like, here's what I have. Yeah. And how can I multiply this? And I'm pretty sure you just had your biggest month ever. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> it was. It was such a cool feeling because... When I was doing it before, I couldn't really see the big vision, but now being in this like group of women and being a part of what you have going on is like really changing my view and really seeing how that big vision actually can play out and what that looks like in my life mm -hmm. and not being scared of that either. Because, you know, very much like yourself, I did not come from this sort of lifestyle and I've just had to really work my way up, just be super resourceful with everything God's given me and you know, take the right opportunities when I have it. And here you are. Here I am. Well, I, I want to talk about your childhood yeah. because so much of our childhood makes us into who we are today. That's yeah. why you are a resourceful person oh, yeah. and you don't give up and you get fired and you go, okay, cool. 
I'm going to hey. go start a business. Hey, do what you got to do. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, um, my mom was a single mom for nine years. And I was telling somebody this earlier this week. I didn't know that. It, basically, I said, I didn't know helpless was an option. Mm. And because like my mom was like, well, I didn't know I was allowed to be helpless. I had two little girls to feed and take care of. And I did the best I could. And I worked really hard. And I, I mean, she worked her way up. And, you know, she's been with the post office for 27 years and has worked her way up through that. And so I was like, I just didn't know it was an option because mm-hmm. I watched her not have any other options other than make it happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, while I'm a little more adventurous, a little more risk taking than her, but I watched her do that. And then I just took it to the next level with willing to take those harder risks and stuff like that. So, well, so not only have you just had your biggest month ever with digital abundance, which yeah. I'm so proud of you. Well, thank you. But you guys also acquired, you guys became, are you full-time owners of the chiropractic office now or you're stepping into it, right? We're stepping into it. So it's, um, we're the retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are 25% owners. We finish our first buy-in next year. So we're just under 12 months away from that. And then we'll start our next 24% into them. Wow. So yeah. So within the next like 10 to 15 years, as they get ready to retire, then we'll just do it in stages. Okay, cool. So yeah. So what has it been like to take some ownership in the brick and mortar business yeah. while you're over here building a virtual business? What's that been like to be able to do two while raising two young children? I really had to do a lot of healing for one because you can get overwhelmed really fast mm-hmm. because you can get triggered by anything and you just have to like say, okay, I don't have time and I don't have the energy to sit here and get upset about this and this and this and this. So what's the most important? What are my values? What, even if I have to some months be a little more here, some months a little more there, but it's like, how do I honor all that time that I have and be as effective as possible? Mm. And so, you know, when I'm home with the kids, if they're playing and they're, you know, doing their thing because, I mean, kids like to play independent too. You don't have to entertain them all the time. Yes. And it's just like, okay, now my now is my time to sit here. I get my laptop out or my phone or whatever's the most, like whatever I'm working on, whether mm-hmm. it's social media or really writing out, doing some like work on my website, things like that. It's like, I'm just getting it done while they're playing and occupied. So that way when they do need me, I have that time too. I mean, it's been beautiful weather at home and the kids will go outside and they'll play for two or three hours. And I just oh, take yeah. my laptop out there with me and I'm like sitting in a lawn chair you know, oh, yeah. working on websites while they're digging in the dirt. So you're in the thick of it right now. It's <laughs> taking me back to yeah. what it was like when I was first building. That was 12 years ago. It oh, seems yeah. like so long ago. But I used to do the same thing. We had two and a half acres and I would just take the kids out there and I'd be like, all right, go. <laughs> yeah. And I'd get to work. Well, and so. that's what you got to do is like when you have that time and you have that capacity and you're like, hey, I understand that like my kids don't need me like full on attention all the time. But then if you're effective during that time, then it's like when they do need you and they do want you and they want to sit and snug, Mm -hmm. then you have that time to do that as well. Absolutely. I think it's a lot of moms, especially I don't experience it really at all anymore. Thank you, God. But when they were little, you experience guilt because you're like, I should be with him every second of the day. Yeah. But actually what I've realized, like it's so healthy for Mm -hmm. them to learn how to play independently. Yeah. But also with their brothers and sisters or, you know, and like being able to figure things out on their own and like explore and not have their mom over them. Like, this is how you play. This is how you color, you know, like telling them how to do everything. And I see a lot of moms that are just like, like that now, but I think it comes from a wound. Yeah. Like, and not a healthy place. And I could say I've been there too, is like, you know, my mom was a working mom. And so it was like, oh, I want to give them as much attention as I can. Mm-hmm. But at some point, it's like they don't want my attention. They just want to go do their thing. And it's like, hey, that's that's all right. Like you can go and do that kind of stuff and then be really intentional. Like when you're traveling or when you're like enjoying a moment with them, it makes those moments even more enjoyable because now they're ready to I mean, they'll let you know when they want you there. Mm-hmm. So. What has been the hardest part about up leveling your money game? You know, to have a big, your biggest month ever, you're having to be able to receive more. So what has been some of the work you've done? 
it's the mental game. Yeah. It's a mental game for me. Watching those things happen, it's kind of like, oh man, am I like, am I deserving of this? Mm -hmm. And having to tell myself like, hey, yeah, like you took, like you took the risks. You were obedient to what God had for you. Because a lot of times, and I know that I still have a lot of people in my life that are like, oh, rich people are like, they're not getting to heaven. They can't be good Christians. And so really the church I'm in now is a good steward of their people and teaching them how to have money and be a good steward of it and and tithe and all that. But also it's not a punishment. It's a way for us to give more and take care of our community. And so the more that we have, we have more opportunity to actually take care of the people that we want to take care of. Yes. I mean, sometimes you're going to, sometimes it's going to be more time. Sometimes it's going to be money. And like, you just have to be discerning of what God has for you in that season. I mean, I've served in my church. I've served in the preschool room. I've had little kids tell them, you know, playing with my hair. And there's a season for that. And then when it wasn't working, I just said, hey, like I have to, you know, I have to take this time off because I can't commit to, you know, their guidelines. Yeah. And, you know, and that's okay too, is like you can do things in seasons too. Mm -hmm. So that's good. So there's a season sometimes to donate your time. Mm -hmm. There's a season sometimes to donate your money. Yeah. Well, there's always a season to donate your money. Uh, There's, (laughs) yeah, there's never not a season. Right. (laughs) So what has been like the most exciting thing for you about coming into more abundance? It is just brought me a different level of people in my life and the people who are willing to have the hard but great conversations that make you a better person. Mm -hmm. And it's really apparent now when you talk to somebody who's next level in their life And they don't let you sit in your pity. They don't let you sit and like, hey, I know you're hurt, but like, this is what you can do in this situation. And I, you know, yeah, sometimes it sucks, Mm -hmm. but sometimes you have to do those things because it's the obedient thing to do. And so just that part of my life has just changed so drastically because it has put me around more women that are of my mindset and it challenges me and it challenges me to get better, you know, every day through more conversations. That's interesting to me that most people would I would answer that question and be like, well, I got a new house. I got a new car. I got this. You know? No, I am so like I tell people all the time. I'm like, I don't want to, you know, uh, increase my lifestyle yet yes. because I have, you know, me and my husband have goals. And it's like we like being able to do our weekend trips and stuff like that. We go to Savannah a lot. We go down to Florida and we like being able to do those little trips while the kids are still small because they're not quite ready for a Disneyland trip. They're not quite ready for the big trips yet. So if we're really smart right now and not up level our lives, I actually got my first brand new car like two years ago. And that was like the weirdest thing ever because I was like, oh my gosh, this is my first brand new car. But, and I didn't want to tell anybody because I was like, oh my gosh, I can't tell people. Um, But Mm -hmm. now it's like, if we are really smart about not you know, increasing our lifestyle too soon, it's going to make bigger dividends in the next two to three years. Mm -hmm. I talk about that all the time, like, right, making sure there's a big gap between your expenses and your lifestyle. So what does that look like for you on a practical basis? Because, you know, as you start making more money, are you taking like a certain percentage and going, I'm going to invest it back in myself, a certain percentage and putting it into assets? Walk me through that. Yeah. So Right now, obviously, we, we're almost done paying our business loan. So we're actually paying that off a year early, uh, which I was really excited. How were you able to do that? We were willing to not up-level our lifestyle yeah. yet. We were able, you know, we were just very like, we'd rather pay this off a year early, pay that much less interest. So that way we can, you know, do the things we want to do mm-hmm. a year earlier. This is such good advice for everybody listening in right now because... No, because social media is the Joneses. Oh, yeah. Right. And everybody like you can't get away from the Joneses. Like you open it up and you're like, I want to be with the Joneses. And it takes a certain mental game, right? To not only make a lot of money, but it also takes a certain mental game to keep the money. Well, and I told my husband, I said, it takes a lot for women, especially because it's like we see everybody getting their hair done, their nails done. I cut my hair for the first time in three years like three months ago i had like but you have hair. really pretty hair well thank you i mean yeah i wouldn't cut it and so you know i finally went and got it done and spent and but because i didn't 
do those things for three years, that gave us so much more financial freedom. I literally was like, I want to go get my nails done for the podcast. And he was like, go do it. This is the first time I've had them done since before I had Quinn. Wow. And so I just for like, I just went without a lot of those little luxuries that add up over time and was willing to say, hey, like, I'm willing to do without those things to have the big things that I want later in life. Right. And so that was, you know, that's a lot of it is for going the little things because we think they don't matter. Those cups of coffee, those whatever. I know. Where's my? I know. She has her Starbucks now. <laughs> but, you know, we invested in a really nice espresso machine for our house instead yeah. of going and getting coffee. So I got you one know. of those too, but I don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my husband drinks way too much coffee for that. So, <laughs> but, you know, just little things like that, that we were like, if we can say no to these little things, we can have bigger things later on. And now that's, we're really starting to see the fruit of that. I love that for you guys. Like that is such a, that's a good place to be because you have a lot of options, yeah. you know, be like this, like you're like, I can go on a plane and come to Kayla for one day. Oh, I know. Right. Because you awesome. had, you had enough like saved up and most people just stretch it a little bit too much. And I was yeah. there before. But you also talked about learn from me. Right. And it's like, and I've listened to a lot of the things that you were like, don't do this. And it's like, <laughs> when you talk about leveling up your lifestyle too early yep. and I'm like, Keep, you're you're good. Just yep. hang tight a Keep little that car. longer. And <laughs> Keep that house. Oh yeah. I mean, my my husband's still driving his paid off car from 2015, and I said you will drive that thing till it falls apart. And, <laughs> and we have that mentality about it because that's just not somewhere we want to spend a lot of money right now. And if it's yeah, in, I think it's all about what's important to you. Yeah. Right. And so it's like you're you're not saying no to the things that really matter to you. Yeah. You're saying, I'm still gonna go on vacation with my family. Yeah. Like we're still gonna go and, and enjoy life. I don't care about the cups of coffee every yeah. day. I don't care about getting my hair done all the time. Yeah. So it's important for everybody listening in right now to understand that like you have to know what's important for you. Yeah. What are you willing to say no to? Right. And then what are you willing to say, like, absolutely, I, I need to have this in my life yeah. every day. And how am I just going to make more money to pay for that every day? Yeah. Right. Like if you're a Starbucks person, you want that $5 cup of coffee every day. Okay. That's $150 <laughs> more a month. Right. Yeah. How can I make an extra $150 more a month? Yeah. So, and if you're willing to grind for it, then get resourceful, get, yeah. get in there and yeah. have, have your $5 cup of coffee, <laughs> you know? But I think that's like, so like important to talk about is that you can, you can do it Sam's way. Yeah. Right. And just sacrifice. Okay. That sounds like torture to me. For a little while, you know, sacrifice for a little while. Yeah. So that way you can have more. But, but I think it's also your childhood that made you like, you're like, I know oh, what yeah. it's like to be like super uncomfortable and this is nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not uncomfortable in my life at all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you forego a few things, but it's like my mom never let me like do anything to my hair growing up. So it was like nothing new for me to not. <laughs> she was like, do not ruin your red hair. And um you know, I guess that just stuck with me and I just fell in love with my hair color. So I was like, oh, you know, it it's works. so pretty. too. Oh, it's so you. pretty. OK, so let's talk about the birth of digital abundance like yeah. coming back in. Yeah, you were in our VIP program and uh, we're like, why are you not building these sites? I remember rewatching the coaching call that you did with Casey and I was going, oh, my gosh, this is genius. This is totally oh, what yeah. she should be doing. And uh, now you're helping people build it out from the ground up. Yeah. What do people need to know? Because I always say, like, you don't necessarily need a website to start yeah. your business, right? It's helpful. Yeah. But what, like, how do they know it's time for them to start a website? I think the biggest thing is, is you have to look at, you know, you can pay $20 a month for Wix and then, you know, $20 a month for your click funnels and stuff like that. At some point, you want to invest in your long-term game. Mm. And while it seems a little scary at first it's like oh man but you're gonna own all that like seo like that search engine optimization you're gonna own all of that and if you start doing it in the beginning instead of waiting five years in and having to restart and now work towards that you can start a little bit smaller and then you're not paying for like landing pages because you can add as many pages to your website because you already own it mm -hmm. instead of paying for this here and this here and this here while it's a few $25 or $30 and all that stuff here and there it's like if you'll just take that and put it into a monthly payment to like put towards a website you know I, like I offer payment plans for people because I get it they're trying to start up and 
It's like, well, yeah, you may pay on that for 10 months, but you're going to pay all that stuff for five years. Right. And by that point, you're going to end up spending more money. Okay. So I got to talk about this as you're saying this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to ask her her opinion yeah. on this whole thing that went viral. I feel like it's kind of going dead right now, but the MRR stuff. Yeah. What, what do you think about that? I think that there's a good and a bad side to it. I think the skills that you get out of it are really great if you actually take the course. Mm -hmm. And if you actually take the course and apply that to something you're passionate about, then yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's like, then people ask you, hey, how did you do this? And it's like, well, here you go. Here's how you can learn it. And I think it's a great tool for that. But a lot of people tried to turn it into a get rich quick. And there's a lot of people that I know that bought it and they were like, oh, I made $13,000 as a beginner. And it's like, well, you're not a beginner. Your other account has 20,000 followers. You're not a beginner. Mm -hmm. You just found something that you could just flip real quick. And so I think the bigger accounts, you know, that have like 10,000, 20,000 followers, somewhere in that range, really sold some small accounts on like, this is what you can do really quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what they failed to mention is that they already had an account that was really rapidly growing and had a big network. Mm. So I think if you're truthful about it, the skills are incredible. And I actually bought it for myself because I was like, hey, if people need help with something that, or maybe they want to learn to do it themselves, I'm saying, hey, like, here's how you can do it. But it's not my, it's not my lead like oh I lead didn't know you got it Look at I that. did um how many did you sell I have sold one okay so you and made it, your money back yeah but but it wasn't about that it was like you I, had that you had a different mindset about it. yeah I had a different mindset mm -hmm. about it because there were some things in there that I didn't know a bunch about but I had some skills that once I learned how to do those things effectively I already had some of the skills to apply with it so it just made me a little more well-rounded and helped me market better. I mean, Digital Abundance was completely live for all of one month so far. And I'm already having, you know, four or five, six consults within a month. But it's because I really went through and like, hey, how is the algorithm changing? How are my emails doing? Because that wasn't, a, that wasn't something I was really strong at was like email marketing. And that was a really big eye opener is like how to get more effective at that. So I used it because I wanted to get better at my skills. And I think you should always be learning. Yeah. And the best marketer wins. So if I'm going to invest in my own marketing skills, then it's it's a no brainer for people that are like, hey, I want to get as good as you. Well, hey, instead of me trying to explain everything I did, here you go. Yeah. You know. Okay, so you said something really cool right now. The best marketer wins. Mm -hmm. And I teach that all the time. Because I know. <laughs> I was like, I write it down every time you say it, because if you were repeating something, that means it's obviously very important. Yes. People can be really good at what they are. Like Erin, that was just on. Yeah. She's really good at helping lawyers. But we we wrapped up at the end and we we're talking about how what she's got to do to market yeah. this whole thing that she has. And, and that's what I'm always talking to my clients about is like and I didn't get into this business to teach marketing, you know, yeah. to talk about marketing. But here I am. This is what we're talking about all the time, because you have to win at marketing in order to be the best, in order to help more people and yeah. have the most ma like the biggest impact you can have. So. Tell me some common myths people have about marketing and bust them for me. People think it's like the like a sales page, but it's like it's not the sales page. It's the layout. It's how you're communicating with people. And you recommended a book, Hypnotic Writing. If you've never read it, people should absolutely read it. It was incredible. I read it in three days and it's like almost 300 page book. Um, I couldn't put it down because obviously it was hypnotic writing. It was so good. And I've had more people than ever tell me, I feel like you're in my head. Yeah. And that's how you want your leads to feel. It's not a, hey, look at this flashy thing I can do. It's what are the results that I can actually get to it because you've talked to me in a way that resonates with me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I see people post and pray, post and pray. And I'm just like, yeah, you can post a picture or you can post a trending audio. But if you're not actually like 
providing people with value in a way that resonates with them, then, I mean, yeah, you can go viral for something funny, but it's not actually going to equate to sales. Absolutely. Okay. It's like, you don't want to just go viral just to go viral. You got to have a plan. Yeah. Let's, what, well, what's the plan? If somebody wants to go viral, which everybody listening in wants to, let's be real. What yeah. should they have in place? What they should have a funnel in place. And you taught me that because that was... <laughs> You were like, have your funnel in place. So that way when you do go viral, everything's already done. So that next day, I literally, I set up my funnel with my $27 offer. So that way people would have us, you know, a little bit of skin in the game, a little bit of commitment, and then you play the long game. Mm -hmm. And people want it to happen so fast, but it's a long game strategy. You know, I look at some of the other ladies in the mastermind and I realize how young I am half the time when they start to talk about, oh, I've been doing this for 10 years. And I was like, oh, man. OK, so I've been like actually really at this for like a year now. And it's like, yeah, you see their sales come in a little bit quicker. And I was kind of like, man, am I just not doing well? But then I'm like, once I realize these people are doing it for five, 10, 12 years, it's like, oh, like they've already built their network. They've mm -hmm. already done the the foundation. And then I quit comparing myself because I'm like, hey, Sam at one year at 30 years old is already miles upon like some of the, the other ladies at 30 because I'm just learning from what they're doing. Mm. Instead of sitting here spinning my wheels, I'm just actually really watching, really observing because we may not all be in the same industry, but if marketing is working, yeah, then it's going to work for me and it's going to take off. It's just a matter of time. Well, and I want to point this out because being with mentors mm -hmm. that have gone before you know what to do can be like, don't do oh, that, yeah. Sam. <laughs> yeah. Right. It shortcuts the process yeah. for you. So that's why you can grow leaps and bounds faster than you could alone. Because oh, yeah. you have somebody going like, yeah, it's not going to work out. Read this book. Do this. It just... And people, I think, really, they overestimate what they're going to do alone. Yeah. They really do. They overestimate it. And they underestimate what they can do when they partner with somebody. Yeah. And I mean, my husband says it all the time. He goes, even if you never made another dollar, it was like, this was still the best investment we ever made in you. Hmm. And I mean, because it's true, it's just like the mental blocks, the relationships, the growth that I've had is like, even if I never made any more money out of it it was just worth what like was invested back into my life mm, what are, talk to me about the mental blocks that you've had in this last year oh i feel like when <laughs> i feel like when you get really intentional about growing and really intentional about working th on things they're gonna hit you like 50 times as hard right and you know i just had to sit there and every time I wanted to get frustrated about things. And I've noticed over the last year, I'd be frustrated for three weeks. And then now it's like, okay, hey, like, is that something that's gonna make or break you? No, then why are you wasting your energy on it? And I'm at this point in my life where it's like, I'm not gonna spend any more time being angry any longer than I have to. Or, you know, people don't do things the same way as me. But if it gets the same result, then great. Like, I I'm here for it. Because I can't sit there and tell everybody, do it my way, just because I think I'm right, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's right for everybody. And so I've just watched that like progression of like what I would hold on to. Just, okay, like, is this something worth fighting for? Yes. Is this not like- Pick it, your battles. Yeah. And I've gotten a lot better at that. <laughs> You've gotten better, better at picking your battles and surrendering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just oh, yeah. trusting the process. Oh yeah, you have to, because otherwise you're just gonna sit there and try to control everything and it's gonna crumble in your hands because you can't control every facet of every person. You just have to realize that like, is the result getting done? Yeah, mm -hmm. and we'll refine when we need to and we'll make those changes as needed. But if the result's still the same and we're still moving forward, then like we have to be okay with that. What does like your spiritual walk look like? Um, so, I mean, kind of my daily routine is I get up somewhere between 6.30 and 7 o'clock every morning. Dang, um, your kids must sleep in. They do. 
You're lucky. <laughs> they sleep they sleep till like well, they also don't go to bed super early, so that kind of makes a difference too. Our days run a little bit later. You know, we don't go to the office till like 10 o'clock. So our days run a little bit later. But I'll get up, have my cup of coffee, do my um Bible what study. What do you put in your coffee? Oh, now you're gonna make me be all controversial over here. Um, I put a scoop of protein powder and then uh, raw milk to fill up my cup. Oh, that's like raw milk and protein powder. Yes. Those two don't really go together, do they? Like you're trying to be raw, but then you have a fake. Yeah. Um, the, I have to have protein like first thing in the morning I'm, or I get really I'm just like, giving you a hard time. No, explaining. no, because you're not the only person that said that. And I'm like, I know my contradiction over here is my coffee. Um, but... I have to have some protein in the morning. And so that's how I just, you like to get I it. Just ha- but I just want my coffee. I'm not like ready to eat the second I get up. But if I just drink like straight coffee, I get like jittery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it you works. found what works for you. I yeah. love it. I'm just giving you a hard oh, time. Oh, no. It's fun. All right. You have coffee. Then you do Bible time. Um, yeah, I do my Bible time. What uh, does it look like? Because I want it for everybody listening in. I've had a lot of listeners. They've realized I've been talking about God a lot yeah. more lately. And they're feeling that calling yeah. to have more of a walk with the Lord. Yeah. But they don't know, like they they want a checklist. Yes. We'll start, start it easy. 15 minutes into your day, five minutes praying, five minutes of reading, and five minutes of like journaling your reflection on what you've read and, and prayed about. Wow. Okay. That's a it good d- little tool. It, it doesn't have to be a big, people think it has to be this like, hour long ordeal. Mm-hmm. I've got two toddlers. If they wake up in the middle of it, well, you know, I got 15 <laughs> minutes. But if I'm cons- like those 15 minutes consistently every morning is going to make my day so much better than one hour a week. Mm-hmm. And like getting to really sit down and focus. And yeah, those times are great. But I'm just not in that season right now. Mm-hmm. And so I just have to get it in consistently. And that's and it's That's not about just getting it in. It's like, why are we doing this? Like, well, why yeah, do we because I can't. I don't want to start my day without it. There we go. You know, okay. like it's. I want to get it in because God isn't God of an or, of order, and so when you put Him first, everything else falls into place. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, yeah, I want to get it in first thing when I get up because that's where I'm releasing like my anxieties, my stress, through my prayer. I'm refilling with his word and then I'm reflecting. And even if, and sometimes it's longer than 15 minutes, but if you're like, hey, I don't know where to start and I don't know how to make this like, is like start with 15 minutes and work your way up. And you may be in a season where you have teenagers and they can get up and take care of themselves. Well, I don't have that right now. Mm -hmm. And so it may be different later on, but if anything, that's my goal every day is just to release, refill, and then reflect. That is so good. Three hours right there. there Let's go. go in 15 minutes. Oh, my goodness. You're teaching, taking everybody <laughs> to church this morning. I feel like I just got a sermon. Okay. So I want to also ask you about your relationship yeah. with your husband. Yeah. Because you guys got a lot going on. You got we do. businesses, kids, and it's not like he's working from home. He's going yeah. and he's adjusting people and he's yeah. doing all that stuff. Okay. So what does that look like to keep your marriage healthy and also like keep God at the center of it. One thing, he is my best friend. Hmm. Like when people are like, oh, he's my best friend. No, he he is my best friend. Like I can be my weird true self with him. We send each other real. I posted a reel the other day. It was like, how does my introvert husband talk? And it's like in reels and I just sent like, <laughs> or, you know, took a screen capture of all the reels we send each other back and forth. But we we're really like good friends, but also like our marriage is like we understand that there's going to be a time for us to do more date nights. We understand that. And we just have this like open compassion for each other. And I've <laughs> listened to so many people that are like, I just don't understand how you compromise so much. And it's like because I just if I enjoy him as a person then it's just enjoyable to do anything he wants to do Hmm. because I just get to watch him enjoy who he truly is. And then he does the same for me. He's a Comic-Con man. I know we- Oh, that's right. I was like, what? He he loves to go to Comic-Con. He loves to dress up at Comic-Con. He is one of those people. And I tell you, I will never go to one of those things on my own. 
but he loves it and our kids love it and it's a really great family time it's never something i would take my kids on my own <laughs> but just getting to watch him be happy and enjoy himself like for me that's such a huge thing and so when we love god really well individually i don't have to sit there and wonder like hey is he praying for our family is he doing all this because his actions show me that every day mm. he's getting up early he's taking the dogs out so you know i don't have to take them out in the cold when it's you know really when it gets colder in the mornings all those kinds of things he's getting up early he's getting all his stuff taken care of he's taking care of himself and then i don't have to wonder because his actions already show me and i don't have to sit there and be like what are you doing you know because i already know although i do ask him that and if he listens to this he's gonna be like you ask me what i'm doing all the time and i'm like i'm just a curious person i just want to know what you're doing <laughs> and we share our location with each other and I, and he was like <laughs> and, and i'm always like seeing when he's coming home so you know like i can have the kids start cleaning up and stuff and today he was like well just let me know where you're at and i'm like honey my location has always been shared with you. Like, just go and look and see he's where I'm never at. Looked before. He's never looked. He, <laughs> it doesn't, like, he's not nosy like me at all. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> but, you know, we're opposites, but we're also the same in a lot of ways, too. And I just want him to be happy and enjoy his life. And I know he wants that for me. And I just, like, that reduces so much tension and everything in our marriage. Because people are like, y'all, like, never fight. And I'm like, well, we... It sounds like you, what you have in your experiencing in your marriage is agape love. Yeah. Like that unconditional. That's why you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you want me to go to Comic-Con? I'll go oh, to Comic-Con yeah. Con with you. I know. I, I mean, I know people like women who are like, I am not doing my husband's weird stuff. And I'm like, like my action of just going just shows him that I care about him. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm like, these nerdy people <laughs> are everywhere. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, he has a great time. Mm -hmm. And he takes you know and he's always taking care of me so it's like i our actions just really show that to each other what would you say to the woman that's listening in right now maybe or the man that is like gosh i want a marriage like that and maybe they're in one that's far from that put your ego aside because that's what it is it's like when you put your ego aside in your marriage in your friendships in your business you're allowing god to step in because like you said edging god out i listened I listen to you a lot, if you haven't noticed. But it is. It's edging God out. And when you let God into every area of your life, you can have that agape love for your friends, for your marriage. And when it's truly God-centered, it's like, it's not hard because I know that God created this wonderful, amazing human being and that I'm supposed to do life with and I'm supposed to submit to. And I know that he loves me and would do anything for me because our actions show that to one another. Mm -hmm. So put your ego aside and enjoy the weird stuff because it makes them so happy and then they're gonna do everything they can to take care of you in return. Yeah, yeah. oh, that's beautiful. Well, I'm so happy for you guys. <laughs> well, thank you. So awesome. All right, where can everybody find you? At Build Your Brand with Sam. I, I realized how much I really enjoyed that and how that much like it really resonates with me because when I talk about building your brand, that's included in your website, your digital marketing, everything that you do, your personal brand is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I want to be known for is helping these businesses grow and, and build with you. Mm -hmm. I just want to be an integral piece of growing people's businesses so I can watch them win. Yeah. And then at digital underscore abundance underscore it's like <laughs> i know i hate underscores oh, but that's yeah. okay you gotta add in the underscores we'll make sure to link it all up in the oh, show yeah. notes but thank you so much for being on yeah this is amazing i've loved seeing you grow from just one year i oh, mean yeah. it hasn't even been a full year but i know just watching you really step into who you are called to be and this is just the beginning for you yeah absolutely thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for pouring into my life and calling me up yeah. Not just calling me out, but calling me up. So <laughs> we all need that. Yeah. Love you. So, love you.